welcome Dr. Glover to the call. And, and I look forward to having him at the Integrated Man Summit in Miami. And for those of you that haven't attended the Integrated Man Summit, this is the second one. And the idea behind it is we really want, we don't want to just fill it up with a ton of different speakers as so much as we want to fill it up with speakers we really like and enjoy listening to that, that mean a lot. Um, so we really usually only have one or two uh, speakers outside the company that, and then they get the chance to speak every day. Um, three days of the event, so they could, you really get a chance to know them and talk to them between the, the, the events. Now, Dr. Glover has an impact on me that goes back before I ever even got into the um, uh, dating community. I didn't even know it existed when I found your book. And um, I, 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 didn't, I didn't know it either when I wrote the book. <laughs> <laughs> it all built up around that, yeah. Um, I found your book, I was, I was living in Long Beach, dating, I was in a relationship, and I read that book and like probably a million times you've heard, I got triggered up the wazoo. I was so triggered, so much to me, emotions and feelings and realizations one after another. And I remember coming home to my girlfriend and I, I, some, the nice guy turned off and I started yelling at her and got mad at her and all this stuff. And then, I, then of course I felt guilty and ashamed. Of course. And uh, then I pulled out the book and showed her and she laughed, she was so great about it. She just laughed, thought it was funny. And, that, I, that she got it. She loved that I was reading the book and she really appreciated it. Um, but that began my journey and my search. I, I ended up uh, in this yoga community for a bit and then I found dating material. And then I just, what I realized is I grew because I was already working as a hypnotherapist, working with a lot of uh, weight loss people and noticing the deep level of codependence and all the weight loss and the structure behind it. And then reading mm -hmm. your book and seeing the similarities in some ways and and how much I just had to keep reading it and highlighting it over and over that, that this is the core of, of men today. You really are talking to a core group of a huge group of men, at least in the Western uh, uh, world. And it's almost shocking. Um, and it makes me ponder what men were like 200 years ago compared to today. Yeah. And so I want to uh, welcome you for being here. Now, if anybody hasn't read his book, get his book. It's called No More Mr. Nice Guy. You, they can go to uh, your website, nomoremrnicegui.com. Yeah, go to Amazon, go to, doc, go to drglover.com. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, easiest way to find me or just, just Google no more Mr. Nice Guy. I even beat out Alice Cooper for about the top 10 spots. So Nice. That, that's awesome. Um, and I've been recommending your book for over 10 years, may, telling everybody to read it. I've probably, I don't know how many copies I've probably got <laughs> sold well, for you. Thank you. you. You probably furnished my office. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> it. That's possible. That's possible. So, um, so let's, let's dig in. Um, um, let's just break it down. For those people on the phone that are wondering if they're a nice guy, you know, what is the nice guy? You know, and, and uh, let's, let's just dive right into that. And, that's, that's a good place to start. Yeah. Um, basically, uh, just to break it completely down, a nice guy is somebody who's internalized a belief that they're not okay just as they are. And we, we can kind of break that down further, how, how, how we do that, how we do it as children, as babies, to start internalize that belief that there's something wrong with us. And then out of that belief develops a, a paradigm, a roadmap, a defense mechanism, a survival skill, whatever we want, we want to call it, of trying to be what we believe other people want us to be in order to, to be approved of, to be liked, to be loved, to get our needs met and hide anything about us that we might that we think might get a negative reaction from people. So basically a nice guy is a person out there, you know, chameleon, you know, holding his finger up, testing the air, see which way the wind's blowing and then going that way. And um, as, as I'm sure we're going to dive deeper into, this causes all kinds of problems for the nice guy himself, but also for the people around him. And, you know, whether it means uh, family, loved ones, friends, work, place. Uh, it, it just doesn't work real well when you spend your life trying to figure out what you think other people want you to be and trying to hide anything you think might get a negative reaction. Yeah, and that's pretty much how I spent my life. Um, um, why do you, when you look at nice guys, it, it intrigues me. Um, well, first off, I spent my life trying to figure out how to please everybody thinking that would make life happy. The way I talk about it is I want to get rid of all the tension out of the environment. And if there's no tension, everybody's going to be happy, which is actually the opposite of true. You know, we go to the movies to experience tension. To go on a yeah, road. We, we watch a sporting event to experience tension. Yeah. yeah. Nice guys do a lot of, um, it seems very intuitive to the nice guy himself. I'm a recovering nice guy as well. That's how I know this stuff. But a lot of stuff we do um, 
is the opposite of, of really what works. And then we think it should work, so we keep doing more of it, doing that whole insanity routine. But one of the things that kind of helps people really get a, a real grasp on this is something I call covert contracts. And a lot of people told me that's one thing in the book that, that really resonated the most and helped them see their patterns. But nice guys, I break it down, but nice guys tend to operate by three covert contracts. They're all if then propositions. And, and they're all kind of like contracts with the world, with, with, with women, with just, you know, whatever. Covert contract number one is that if I'm a good guy, I'll be liked and loved. Uh, and, and especially women will want to sleep with me. And you know, probably you tried this and a lot of people we work with try it. I call it nice guy seduction. Well, if I'm just really nice to women and hide my sexual agenda, listen to them talk about their problems, volunteer to help them do things. If I'm different from the other bad men I've heard them complain about, then they'll like me, love me and want to get naked with me. And yeah. as we've all found out, it doesn't work. It puts you in the friend zone, but that's a maybe if you're lucky. Um, so covert contract number one, if, if I just um, am a good guy, I'll be liked and loved. Covert contract number two is that if I meet everybody else's needs without them having to ask, then they will meet my needs without me having to ask. And again, uh, this is another covert contract that doesn't work. Number one, nobody else knows about the contract. We're trying to guess at what other people's needs are, and we're giving them kind of what we need to give them, not what they need to receive. And then assuming they'll read our minds as well, and they'll give back to us without us having to ask. Well, of course, a lot of times people don't even know the contract exists. They don't know what it is we need. And to top it off, we nice guys are terrible receivers. We actually make it hard for people to give to us, and we don't usually give to ourselves very well as either, very well either. Third covert contract is if I do everything right, I'll have a smooth, problem-free life. And that's kind of like that, you know, no anxiety yeah. thing you're talking about. If I do everything right, well, number one, where's the rule book for doing everything right? You know, I don't know. I, a few people have written a book and they said, this is the rule book, you know, mm -hmm. do everything. But even in those rule books, they usually say, all fall short of the glory of God. All are sinners. You know, you can't do it right. So, but we think, oh, if I do everything right, then nothing will ever go wrong in my life. You know, my, my, my girlfriend will never get mad at me. My boss will never fire me. You know, I'll never get audited by the IRS. I'll never get a flat tire. The world doesn't work that way. But, co but nice guys believe those three covert contracts should get them everything they want in life, should get them liked and loved. It should get their needs met. And it should get them that calm, free, problem-free life that they've been striving for since they were like three weeks old. Uh, it's funny it's, when you say all that, that calm, free, problem, free life they're striving for it. And if they got it, they would be so unhappy anyways, because I just don't think men are built to be unchallenged. We're, we, as soon as we, we're unchallenged, living in a challenge free world, we're bored. Yeah. You know? it, my wife tells me that all the time. She said, you know, she says, if I wasn't like the ocean, if I wasn't changing every time, you'd get bored with me. Should have, she'll say, if I wasn't crazy, you'd get bored with me. And I, said, well, I, I, I can't argue with that. And, and you're right. <laughs>